guys, today I'm gonna teach you how to paint a super cute mini watercolor like this. So make sure you keep on watching. this tutorial, you're going to need a glass of clean water, the watercolors of your choice. I'm going to be using a daisy palette. I'm also going to be painting on fluid cold pressed watercolor paper. This is the cellulose paper, not the expensive stuff. And I'm going to use mainly synthetic brushes for this just because they handle quite well with the Sakura Koi watercolors that I'm going to be using in this tutorial. And you can check out a link in my description below if you would like to order your own set of Sakura watercolors. And if you're looking for more watercolors, tips, tricks, and tutorials, don't forget to check out natosoup.blogspot.com. So I've gone ahead and grabbed my brushes and I have very limited space. So I'm gonna put my brush holder to the side since this palette does take up a lot more space than my old palette. And I usually like to use an eyedropper. This one might actually be dirty though. No, just dried, probably uh, India ink. And because I started my review earlier, or my overview earlier, um, most of my pigments are activated, but if you are watercoloring and you're using half pans like this, it's good to put a drop of water in each pan that you plan on utilizing. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up warts. Move that out of the way. Skin tone. And I like to use scarlet or vermilion and yellow ochre. And these paints can be quite opaque, as you'll find out if you watch my overview video. So you really don't need a whole lot. And I'm also going to grab a scrap sheet of paper to act as a rest because with the problem with brusho is that it never fully it never fully stabilizes. You can always reactivate it if you add water. And that also means if your hand is wet or clammy, um, there's a good chance that you can reactivate it. So I would love a new recording space. This is, this is intense, but I'm going to start out by laying down his skin tone. And the background, like I said, was done with brush -o and wax resist. And I have a lot of videos on using brush -o. And I'm just using a large synthetic round. This is a Utrecht Red Sable Blend in a size 10. But uh, you really have to be careful about brush sizes because there is no real standardization. So what is one, what works for one size may not be the case for another. And I'm gonna go ahead and shade in his white shirt. And to shade whites, you just want to use a very watered down blue. But you want to put something there. It shouldn't just be the white of the paper. Okay, now you need to step away and allow that to dry. All right, so his skin is still drying, but I'm going to go ahead and paint his hat. And I'm going to start with one of the reds and I'm going to mix it into one of the pans just to make sure I get enough water in there. And add a darker red and I apologize that I am pulled out so that you are pulled in rather. So you can't see the colors I'm using, but hopefully you can at least see what I'm doing. 
and we as always want to start light because you can always get darker but it's much harder to get lighter so I find it's easiest to just start a couple shades lighter or even multiple shades depending on what we're rendering start lighter and work darker and then his cloak is dark blue so I'm going to do the same in another palette and these are just sort of initial layers I'm going to build them up as I go I'm going to use a delicate hand oh wait the inside of his cloak is red isn't it if you goof like that in general you can take a brush with clean water and just sort of wash that out yes the inside of his cloak is red and we're working around the buttons you can use um what is it the latex based stuff a mask a, a resist mask no that's not it sorry having trouble wording today I have it literally on my tabletop I can grab it in a minute Winsor and Newton makes it Schminky makes it or Schminka makes it problem with these natural hair, or sorry, synthetic hair brushes, is that they don't hold water worth anything. Um, they are, will just deposit it on your paper surface and be done with it. They're very lazy. So you have to be careful with them. They do have a bit of a mind of their own. I'm gonna go back in to his hat now. And I left that to indicate a bit of a shine. And then his pants are sort of like a brown and a gray. And I like using these daisy palettes. I could be using the palette that came with this. I could be using the inside cover, but I like using these daisy palettes because they're very easy to clean out. It's pretty much always one in my sink ready to be washed. And there's two. All right. And we're going to give that a chance to dry. All right. So everything has had a chance to dry. I'm going to go ahead and first off, I'm going to zoom in for you guys. And second off, I am going to go ahead I might want to mix this darker but I'm gonna go ahead and start blocking in areas of shadow on Ward's face so a good half of the face is going to already be in shadow as well as the area above his eyes and around his face and I'm gonna do the majority of his ear unfortunately I do need to mix this darker because it is not showing up. It's showing up on camera better than it is in real life. So a little bit more yellow ochre, a little bit more vermilion. You wanna be careful because since these are kind of opaque, they can get overly dark quickly. I could swatch, but you know, I'd rather get burned. Just kidding. I'm pretty familiar with the colors, so I've, I have done this many a time, I'm not over concerned about needing a swatch. Going to go into the white of his shirt again, having just mixed the color a bit darker. And you see if you use a light hand, it really does read as, oh, that's a white shirt. It's just in shadow. And I might even add a little bit, a wee bit of blue green. Since he is in the woods, and the green of the foliage would influence that. And then I'm 
I'm going to add another layer of the dark red, the really dark red. And step away. All right, so this has had a chance to dry. We're gonna go ahead and start using that darker mix. Hopefully we can get a little more contrast. All right. And I also want to do the inside of his cape which is about the same color as his hat. So I can use this dark red that I mixed previously. And then just a little bit of the blue here where the cape would overlap. and where his suspenders would cast a shadow. And I'm gonna pull out a little bit so we can reframe this. And now that that's had a chance to dry, I'm going to go ahead and do a darker layer with the dark blue, still building those colors up. I know a lot of artists paint with this particular set as well as the artist loft set um, very thickly. They treat it more like gouache than watercolor and that's definitely something you can do especially considering that these are very opaque watercolors. In fact that is a technique that I would really like to play more with. I have not had good results when I have done it in the past but that was with a different set so perhaps I will get better results trying it out with this set. All right, so it is time to work on Ward's hair. And usually I would use what they call light red. And I would say is more like Venetian red. I would usually use that mixed with black until I got a brown close enough because it can be a little difficult when you're working with one brown in a single palette but with the 24 palette we have two browns and yes I do know I can mix my own neutrals by mixing complements but sometimes you just want a predictable brown fortunately I don't think I'm going to be able to get it dark enough by mixing the two browns, so mix in a little bit of black and that should do it. But before I paint his hair, I actually want, let me zoom out a little, I actually want to do some lifting on his pants. So I'm gonna take a brush and dip it in clean water. I'm gonna go over the area I wanna lift and that's where these synthetics are particularly handy. They do a Really good job of lifting, sometimes too good. Let's see, dip, lift that. And then we're going to first add some water back to the base color, but also sort of blend it out a little bit. Now I'll go ahead and do the first layer of warts hair. And you guys might those of you who watch my other types of watercolor videos, you might notice that I'm not the biggest fan of synthetics, but synthetics are very affordable and you can find them at a wider variety of places and they will take a lot of abuse. So if you are just beginning, good synthetics are perfectly acceptable although i would recommend having one or two decent um sorry about that one or two decent natural hair brushes and get those fairly affordably 
a jury's art of Rama. Go ahead, add another layer to the interior of his cloak. And the green background was a good decision because the red of his hat and the red of his cloak contrast nicely. So he pops out from the background. Go ahead and let that dry. All right, so everything has had a chance to dry. Looks like I'm going to either need to allow my skin tone to evaporate somewhat or mix it a little darker. And if you have all day, you can let your skin tone evaporate and that'll allow you to very easily color match it without worrying about it, um, you know, changing too much. But, you know, part of this type of commission is that they are done in a relatively quick manner, which allows me to charge the fairly inexpensive prices I charge for this type of commission. So I do not have all day to just let it dry. So that means I need to mix it darker. And we're gonna need to mix the brown in his hair darker. So we're gonna need to add more black to that. And I'm actually going to start leaving the highlight. So I'll start underneath the brim of his hat. zoom in for you guys so you guys can actually see what I'm doing. And we're going to step away and let it dry. All right, so that's had a chance to dry. I'm going to go back into the face. Still not as dark as I would like it to be. So what I usually do is I will usually paint three commission watercolors at a time and I'll hit about this point and I'll let everything dry overnight and then I'll finish them up. But since I am working with a slightly different palette than I'm used to, I wanted to give myself the opportunity to get used to it. And I also wanted to record this as a bit of a tutorial. I know I have, oh, I need to clean that up. I know I have covered this in the past or something similar. So I know that this is not necessarily entirely brand new material, but that's okay. Uh, humans learn through repetition. And I'm always happy to repetite. <laughs> He's coming along quite nicely. Not the hottest on his hair, but we're going to keep working on that. We're going to get it good. I have a big Yuri on Ice commission that I'm excited about that I'm also going to record for you guys. Mostly because I'm just excited about it. And I think it will be a cool thing. To record. And I have a bush here that I missed with the brush out, unfortunately. So I'm just going to fill it in and add some wet into wet blending just to help make it look like the background. And I'm going to step away. 
Okay, that has had plenty of time to dry. So I am going to go in with that dark blue. Makes it much darker. And put another layer or two on the cloak. Having a bit of a difficult time getting this dark blue as dark as I need. Not sure what's going on with that exactly. So, want to go ahead and darken up his hair. That's about the right color. It took a while to get there. Think you guys know the drill by now step away and let it dry guys this has had a chance to dry overnight so i am going to go in and tighten some of the details that were um kind of left unfinished yesterday one of the first things i want to do is i do want to add some blush and then i'm going to want to blend that out And you just use a brush of clean water dipped into the area of blush while still wet. And you can also sort of tighten it up or add more intensity to the color by going over it or adding some more of the blush color. And I also need to do his suspenders so I'm mixing Payne's gray and blue. Then I'm going to go back in with the indigo color. It's actually Prussian blue I believe. And since his cheeks are dry I'm gonna go into his skin. I've allowed the skin color to evaporate overnight so it's going to intensify quite a bit and I'm going to use that to paint in some of the darkest shadows of his skin and I need to go back into his neck when this blue has dried Oh, I'm going to step away and give that a chance to dry. All right, so that's had a chance to dry. I'm going to go ahead now and paint in his neck. And I want to darken up the shadow on Wart's hat. So I'm going to go ahead and activate my watercolor since they did have a chance to dry overnight. And while I let that sort of reactivate, I'm going to go ahead and work a bit on his hair. Today I'm also going to start a victory watercolor. So I hope you Yuri on Ice fans look forward to that. excited about painting it. Told The commissioner told me to go full force with the shoujo. And I have all of these glittery paints that I can pull out. It's going to be amazing. Alright, I think that darker red has had a chance. I may end up working some purple into it as well. And 
back on camera, just to make it on camera, I'm gonna mix up a batch of red violet. It is handy to have a pre-mixed purple. You can't actually get as nice a mix with uh, the 12 piece set by mixing Prussian blue with the sort of burgundy color they've included. So having a, a warm violet that you can mix is actually really helpful. Oh, yes, that's nice. All right, so I'm going to step away and let that dry. All right, guys, let's add the finishing piece, finishing touches to this watercolor illustration. So I'm going to use a very small brush and I am just going to sort of tighten up the outline here on the skin. as well as maybe tighten up his shirt a bit with a darker shade of blue. Add some darker accents to his buttons. line on his cloak here if we can get it and may have to mix some black in there just to get it dark enough normally I would not recommend that you mix black in um, but we are sort of limited with some of these colors so got to find a way to work around it Right, and then I need to let that dry before I go in with white accents. All right guys, that has had a chance to dry. So we're gonna go in and add those final white highlights. And I am using a stiffer synthetic brush just cause it stands up a little bit better to the Copic opaque white. So we're gonna add some highlights here on his cloak buttons as well as a highlight on his white shirt. Definitely going to add some highlights to his eyes. And I'll zoom in for you guys, as well as a highlight on his hair. And I think that might be it for white highlights. So other than removing this from the block, which I'm actually not going to do on camera, I think we're just about done. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you're interested in commissioning me for a watercolor piece of your own, you can let me know in the comments below, or you can contact me via email, or you can check out my options at my site, natosoup.com shop. Um, and you can check the description below for all relevant links. Um, a little commission like this will run you about 20 to $25. So it's really quite affordable. And if you like, I can even record it so you can follow along. Um, I want to thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you found this little tutorial helpful. And I hope you'll check out my review of the Sakura Koi 24 piece watercolor set, especially if you are interested in um, maybe dipping your feet into
into the watery pools of watercolor. If you have any questions, let me know below in the comments and don't forget to hit like and consider subscribing for more content like this. I hope to see you guys again really soon and I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.